In this video, we are going to help you choose the correct load cell for your application. First, we will discuss the four different types of load cells that we offer, which are S-type, single point, platform, and button load cells. We'll take a look at some typical applications for each type, and finally, a selection table is provided to help you choose the class of load cell that is the most appropriate for your project. At Fidgets, we stock a focused selection of load cells and load cell interfaces. Our products are powerful, cost-effective, and work with the most popular programming languages. We offer pre-built software, code examples, and visualization tools to help you succeed. Check out fidgets.com after the video to learn more. Single point load cells measure shearing forces. They're designed with holes machined out of the middle, which encourages the beam to bend along the measurement axis. These load cells are often used in kitchen scales and similar applications because they allow for off-axis loading. This means objects can be placed anywhere on the scale platform and the results will still be accurate. They're designed to be used individually and they offer a high degree of accuracy while also keeping the cost and complexity of systems low. Single point load cells come in various sizes and weight capacities. These load cells are better suited for static loads. Because of their design, strong impact forces or repeatedly overloading the load cell can result in permanent deformation or even destruction of the load cell. As mentioned, it's not recommended to use these load cells in parallel, which would make the system more complex. There are load cells that are better suited for this, which we will see in a bit. An example application for a single point load cell is a food scale for measuring the weight of ingredients for cooking or baking. This is a great use case for this type of load cell because only one load cell is required, as shown in this close-up of the scale. This reduces the cost and complexity of the system while still maintaining high accuracy and repeatability. Also, the ingredients being weighed are a static load. We are not expecting large dynamic impacting forces. Next, let's take a look at platform load cells. These load cells are designed to be used in parallel for multi-point weighing platforms. Because the platform is supported in more than one place, systems made with these load cells are very stable and durable. Load distribution does not matter, and dynamic forces can be easily withstood. Some platform load cells are sold in sets, which indicates they should only be used together. Other platform load cells are sold individually, meaning they can be used in parallel with any number of the same load cells. One application of platform load cells is when weighing livestock. Due to the size and weight of livestock, a durable scale is required. Getting livestock to consistently stand in the same location is difficult, so the ability to measure uneven weight distributions on the platform is a big advantage. The next type of load cell is the S-type load cell. They are easily identified due to their S shape. These load cells are primarily used to measure tension, which makes them ideal for applications with suspended loads and hanging scales. Installation is easy due to the mounting holes on the top and the bottom. Eye bolts or rod end bearings can be easily attached and provide an easy connection point to the rest of the system. Some applications of S-type load cells is monitoring tension in cables, ropes, and chains, such as on a winch or on a crane. Finally, let's take a look at button load cells. These load cells are designed to measure pure compression on a single point. Button load cells can support very high weight capacities, considering their relatively small form factor. They can also be wired in parallel. Unlike the other load cells we discussed, the loading platform cannot be directly secured to button load cells. It needs to rest on the small button to minimize lateral forces. This increases the complexity of the system and will require additional care when designing the mechanical frame and support structure. This table offers a quick comparison of the load cells discussed in this video. When choosing the load cell type, we want to consider the application. Will the load be suspended or pulled? Will it be staying still or moving? Is it evenly distributed on the platform? What type of force is being applied by the object? Does the supporting structure and platform require extra stability and durability? Will multiple load cells be required? Once you have decided on the type of load cell you need, take a look at the video dedicated for that type. These videos will help you successfully calibrate, install, and assess the accuracy of your chosen load cell. 